Hello and welcome. Our guest today is Uber Esketh, the chief statistician with the WTO, and the topic is measuring trade in value-added terms. Uber, welcome. welcome. Can you explain what we mean by value-added trade? Okay, Keith. But I may start by why we need, and after that I'll explain why. Fine. What? I guess we need it because the uh, world has been changing quite fast uh, lately, and things are not done, produced, and traded the way they used to be 50 years ago. In the old time, you had large plants making everything from A to Z, from design to production, even transportation. Everything was done in the same plant in the same country. So when it was exported, when you had made in UK, for example, on a label, you knew that everything came from England. Today, large companies are organized uh, according to what we called supply chain, a global value chains, where in fact all this process, which before took place in one roof, is now fragmented across the world. So some parts come from Sweden, other from China, Japan, Korea. So now when you buy a car, for example, uh, you, it may be imported from Sweden, but have components from a lot of uh, different countries. So the label made in Sweden or made in Switzerland, made in UK, is no more meaningful. Everything is made in the world. What we mean by measuring trade in value added is measuring in each product what share of the total value comes from Sweden, comes from the UK, Germany and China in order to really make sure that we measure the real economic content of trade flows and we give to Cesar what belongs to Cesar, <laughs> as it is said. <laughs> Why is it important that we consider measuring trade in this way? Well, because the old measure or the traditional measure uh, gives a, a wrong figure about bilateral trade flows. And when you have the wrong figure, you may take the wrong decision. I guess you Americans say you may be barking at the wrong tree. Uh, let's take a, an example. For example, this uh, bilateral trade deficit uh, the USA have with China. When we measure it, according to the, the real domestic content of what is Chinese in the Chinese product that are exported to the USA, we realize that only half of that comes from China. Half? And yeah, around. I mean, it's an estimate. Well, we are statisticians, <laughs> we are not accountants. But uh, the rest will come from Korea, from Japan, and even more interestingly, it may come from the US. So in fact, part of the value you are importing from China are in fact re-imports from the USA. In particular, in the value of electronics, a lot of uh, uh, the most advanced part, uh, the intellectual content, you know, when you have a transistor, uh, you have the consumer, but you have, you have all these things. And my, I don't say most of them, but uh, a good part of it uh, come from the US. So having the right figure may help uh, decision makers to uh, take the, the right decision. Which leads me to my next question. What would be the impact on trade and on trade policy were we to change the way in which we calculate these figures? Uh, we will change the way we understand trade and uh, by definition it will have uh, an impact on uh, trade policy. When we measure the domestic content of our export, uh, take the example of uh, a German car, for example. According to the traditional statistics, this is exported by the German manufacturing sector. But when we look at the value added, where it comes, even the German part of the value added is not coming all from a manufacturer. You have a lot of services, research, development, transportation, everything which made possible the design and the production of the car. And you know that today, especially in a developed country, a lot of jobs are in services. So by measuring exactly uh, what is the domestic content and where it comes from, 
we may help people realizing that trade is really a business of everybody. The first thing. The second thing which is important for trade policy is that it shows that world today is totally interlinked. Production is interlinked, jobs are interlinked, so that we cannot consider negotiation as a, us against them. That what we win is what they will lose or what they win it's what we'll lose. Here, if we negotiate badly as a protectionist way, everybody may lose because uh, my firms are competitive because they are using uh, competitive imports. And including services. Including services. So in this situation, it's no more the traditional negotiation of face to face. It's more a kind of cooperation. We should consider negotiation as a cooperation where everybody will win. And I guess there were an example of this cooperation uh, in, in the past crisis, where really uh, government, national government, realized that alone they could not do anything. So you had all these meetings of the G20, which, with difficulties, uh, were able to put on the table a, a coordinated answer to this global crisis. Because today, everything is global. Uber Esketh, thank you very much for being with us.